Hello everyone. We are heading to Tallahassee in a rental car to start segment 8 of the Eastern Divide Trail, or also known as the Florida Divide. The Eastern Divide Trail, or EDT, is the longest contiguous off-road centric bikepacking route in the world at roughly 5,900 miles. It runs from Cape Spear, Newfoundland, the easternmost point of North America, to Key West, Florida, the end of the road going south. The EDT was developed by Bikepacking.com with the help of numerous contributors and is broken up into eight segments. Segment 8 was designed by Carlos Bernard from Singletracksamurai.com. If you all are interested in Section 8, please contact Carlos to purchase the latest route, which includes a trail guide, as we all need to support the awesome people that come up with these amazing routes. Also consider supporting Bikepacking.com by being part of their Bikepacking Collective as they are an invaluable source into the best way to see this wonderful world that we all live in. After a short rain delay, we got going from the Tallahassee airport where we dropped off our rental car. The official start location is in downtown Tally, with a short loop that we skipped and just headed straight to the Munson Hill mountain bike trails. These are fun, fast-flowing trails and a perfect way to kick off this adventure. I think people have mixed feelings about bikepacking in Florida and hope after watching this video it may change your mind. We always try to keep an open mind when bikepacking and take in the beauty each area that we ride through has to offer. What you will get in Florida is an incredible amount of wildlife and an ever-changing ecosystem that will keep you interested the entire time. Sure there will be some slow sections with sand or water but that is all part of the adventure. This part of Florida has been getting a good amount of rain lately and the wet sand is slowing us down a little bit. We are trying to make it to the small town of Sop Choppy where there is a local microbrewery that has a food truck which stops taking orders at 745. It's going to be a close one as we ride into the darkness. We make it with about 10 minutes to spare and enjoy the rest of the evening at the brewery, then head to the local park to get a campsite. It's 36 degrees when we get up this morning, which is pretty cold for Florida. And to make it even colder, it's going to be a strong headwind for much of the day. Yesterday and today follow the same route as the Tally Tango, which we rode in 2020. The St. Mark's Wildlife Area is always a highlight of this section and serves up grand views and excellent wildlife. Thank you. 
After talking to the locals, we decided to skip the Florida Trail section along the Scylla River due to the river water elevation being four feet higher than normal. With the river running this high, it would result in us pushing the bikes through deep water in the low areas. One of the highlights we will miss by skipping this section is the Scylla Rapids. But with the river running this high, you will not be able to see the rapids anyway. Original plan was to camp at the Upper Asilla River Camp. So we decided to backtrack on the route to still camp along the river, and we made it here right before sunset and got set up and went to sleep. It's still around 40 degrees, but the cold snap is over, and from here on out, it'll only be getting warmer. It was pretty cool to get to see this river otter in the wild. He was probably not very happy to have us watching. We stopped at the iconic soda machine some genius homeowner has by the road along the Florida Trail. We saw several Florida trail hikers today as the bike route weaves on and off the Florida trail. They would be the first of many we'd see along this route. Another highlight for today is riding the single track sections along the Withlacoochee and Swanee rivers. The single track on this route is perfect for a loaded bike and so much fun to ride. We were planning on camping at the confluence of the two rivers, which is an awesome place to camp by the way, but was already taken by a group of hikers who did not appear to want to share this area with us. So we pushed on and ended up at the Gibson Park and got a sweet spot close to the Swanee River. This actually worked out pretty good as we are now 10 miles further, which our tomorrow selves will be happy for, and also got a hot shower. Did I mention this place was only $5.50? What a bargain. Just 
Today's ride continues roughly following the Suwannee River through the Holton Creek Wildlife Management Area as we weave around all the sinkholes, some with water and some without. You seem to brighten all my days It's you just being graceful And I've seen you look my We are kind of in the middle of nowhere and can't figure out why this section of road is paved until we get to the Senior Premier Living Abandoned Development, which looked like it was once a nice place. We have a fun section of single track as we are back riding along the Suwannee River to Stephen Foster State Park with its fancy tower, then head to Fat Bellies in the town of White Springs for lunch. After the tasty lunch and resupply in town, we are back along the Suwannee River again for one last time and treat it to more mountain bike trails. I found this little duck on the side of the road in White Springs that is now along for the ride. We were originally targeting the Osceola Shelter, which is along the Florida Trail as our endpoint for today. But after talking to Carlos, he suggested riding further to Ocean Pond Campground, which would be a better option. And again, you may see this pretty common for us and typically choose the option with a hot shower and more miles. We get to the very nice campground right before sunset and the extra effort was well worth it. This is going to be a shorter day as we head to the town of Alachua where we are going to get a hotel. This shorter day allows us to recharge our bodies, wash clothes, and charge all the camera gear and electronics, since our next two days are going to be big ones. If y'all are wondering, I can make it around five days without needing to charge batteries for the 8.7 pounds of camera gear and related crap I'm carrying. I kind of wish I didn't know how much all this stuff weighs. Because you know, I could have a nice camping chair to relax in instead of making these videos. But of course, I'm just joking. Yeah, I'll be doing fine. We varied from the official route a little bit today so we would not have to backtrack to downtown Alachua where we found this awesome cafe for lunch. Downtown Alachua is nice, even has a place to hang out in this cool courtyard to contemplate life if you have the time. So this is Mill Creek Sink, where you can scuba dive into the black abyss if this is your thing. And to think that some people think bikepacking is dangerous. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see from the darkness, we got an early start, as this is going to be the biggest daily mileage of the entire adventure. Our goal is to make it to Buckman Lock before sunset, and hopefully the entrance gate is open, so we don't need to lift the bikes over it. And quite frankly, we just want to see this place in the daytime. Last time we were there, it was like 4 o'clock in the morning. This part of Florida has beautiful oak tree covered back roads and friendly cows. Here's a good example of some Florida sand. It's actually kind of fun to ride sometimes. Just think about it like this. It's Florida's equivalent to a steep rocky climb. It's looking like we played our cards correctly and going to make it to Buckman Lock in the daylight and before they close the gate. We still have the two lock gates but have the combo for those. We roll in the Rodman campground right at sunset. We are tired but happy to have made it. We rode some of this section last year during the bikepacking race in the dark. So we are pretty excited to see this area in the daylight.
We fondly call this area the Bermuda Triangle because almost every long distance bikepacking route in Florida goes through some part of the Ocala National Forest. And to be honest, it's usually not our favorite section. Maybe because we have ridden this area way too many times, or possibly the headwind mixed with the extra sand, and somehow we seem to be having summer weather in February that is making this section less enjoyable. I told you about the A-line! Slow and steady is the name of the game. And we make it through to the other side. Then take a break at a convenience store. Maggie Jones Road is one of those roads people do not forget, unless you happen to hit it just at the right time. Fortunately, we did not. Our endpoint for today is Sulphur Springs Camp, or Shark Tooth Camp as labeled on the map. It's a short walk to the actual spring head where it comes out of the ground. In theory, you can find shark teeth here, to which we did not, but also did not try that hard. Today was a pretty hard one, and we're just thankful we made it and looking forward to a shorter day tomorrow. Good night and sweet dreams. It was a super foggy morning as we finished off the beautiful Seminole Forest segment before heading through the urban sprawl north of Orlando. It's actually enjoyable as we make our way through pretty much all unpaved bicycle paths, but sensory overload compared to where we've been the last several days. Today is an exciting day as we will be picked up by my parents in Christmas to stay the night in their house in Titusville. So we are hustling to get there as soon as we can. Wake up in an open field, I feel the breeze, I breathe the air in your hand. From fall, time and space, to see your face, I love you, Grace.
we were totally surprised by the Orlando Wetlands Park. We never knew this awesome area was here and so close to my parents' house. We will definitely be back when we have more time to explore and enjoy the wildlife. The video does not do this place justice, by the way. We were running a little behind schedule and decided to veer off the route at the Wetlands Park and make a beeline to Fort Christmas to meet up with my parents. You can go back, let's go park over by the fort. I want to see the fort since we're here. Okay. Hello. Hi. <laughs> We had a fun evening hanging out and celebrated reaching the halfway point of this adventure today. My parents dropped us off at the largest alligator in the world. Just look how big its eye is. I know it's pretty scary, you might have to look away. Thanks mom and dad for transporting us to Titusville and back. It was awesome visiting with you all. This area of Florida has not been getting much rain this year, and while it can make it more difficult pedaling through the dry sand at times, there is one benefit, and it's in this section just north of Highway 520. Normally water depth in this section can be several feet deep. We consider ourselves lucky and only have a couple of short sections of water and sogginess. Every long distance route is going to have some road sections, and this is one of them. It's about 35 miles long on some busy roads, most of them with a the paved shoulder though. A good place to stop for food, well actually it's the only place you'll see before entering the Three Forks Conservation Area, is Gator's Grill, where they have a restaurant, outdoor bar with live music, and airboat rides. The Three Forks area is a hidden gem and is an amazing place to cycle through. The expansive views and amount of wildlife are stunning. This is what we were talking about at the beginning of the video with the diversity of the ecosystems that you will ride through.
If you're curious, the wind has not been in our favor the entire time. This time of year is typically north to south, but same as the weird hot weather, it's the south to north predominant summer pattern instead. We originally planned on staying at the Three Forks shelter. However, it's still fairly early and I've ridden about 65 miles so far. You all might be getting a picture of how we operate now and decide to push on to see if we can get a 100 mile day with a new goal of Jackson Lake and think we could make it there before dark. This is just a personal preference of ours, but we typically would rather not ride in the dark because you miss out on all of the great scenery. We make it to Jackson Lake right at sunset and got a free campsite close to the lake. To our surprise, we are treated to a firefly show while setting up camp and cooking dinner. What a perfect way to end another epic day on the Florida Divide. Thanks to our yesterday selves, we are now 35 miles farther and will keep this going and set a new endpoint of Lake Okeechobee for today. Hello again. <laughs> you need any water or anything? No, I'm sure I got two liters. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, no, now we're good. We, we can make it a little farther a day than you <laughs> walking. Where'd you camp at? Last uh, so you know where the bridge was? Yeah. Um, there was actual primitive campsite just back there that had a, uh, had a, a well pump. Oh, nice. Yeah. There are gates along this route, but keep your eyes peeled because there is typically a way around them without lifting your bike. River Ranch is a really nice place, but like most touristy places, it's a little pricey. It's really busy with lots of people camping, riding horses, clay shooting, and watching the animals. They even have a rodeo.
We stopped and got a snack at the cafe, refilled on water, and kept moving. This next section in the Kissimmee Prairie Park is a tough one. The riding surface is rough due to wild hogs digging up the soil, and when you finally make it past this section, the tilled up prairie sand roads begin, forcing us to ride on the edges. The heat is also not helping our mood as it's legit summer temps right now, with 107 degrees in the sun, and it's not even noon yet. This section is also famous for being flooded, as much as four feet deep in some of the sloughs. But luckily for us, all the dry weather helped us out and the water is not that bad. This place is a certified dark sky park, so it'd be an amazing place to camp and see the Milky Way. This has been a pretty hard day, and we are ready to make it to our camp spot for the night. Right before getting on the Lake Okeechobee Trail, we stopped at a boat ramp bathroom to wash up. For some reason, we are really dirty and sweaty. Go figure. As soon as we got the tent up and the sun went down, the mosquitoes came out with full force, pushing us into the tent. It's a damp morning along Lake Okeechobee as we listen to airboats off in the distance while breaking down camp. This is an antlion, which is a species of insect known for its predatory habits of their larvae that mostly dig sand pits to trap passing ants and other prey, or in this case, one that drops in. Something that may be surprising to you all is they have a similar life cycle to a butterfly, 
and can take several years to complete their life cycle. In theory, today should have been a fairly easy ride along the lake to Cluiston, but we have a strong headwind that is making us work for it. Along this section you bounce on and off the Lake Okeechobee Trail and in the town of Moorhaven we pass by a very interesting Heineken bottle house which is actually very well done. Off in the distance you can see the smoke from the burning sugarcane fields which they do before harvesting. We are back riding along Lake Okeechobee for one last time, and it's sure beautiful in the early morning. Lake Okeechobee at 730 square miles is the second largest freshwater lake in the United States. A big section of today's ride is through sugarcane fields outside the town of Cluiston, which is known as America's sweetest town. We are thinking this may have been the sugarcane field we saw burning yesterday that they are now harvesting.
Do you need any water? Oh, I mean, if you need some, I mean, we could spare some if you need it. Huh? The Florida trail hiker we just gave some water to mentioned about water caches along this section and how he missed one. There was one right by this gate and another one just down the road close to where he camped. So not sure how he missed them. Maybe because his surroundings move really fast at walking speed? I don't know, not sure. That's cool somebody puts water there. Yeah. The Azteca is a must stop in this area. First, because it's actually the only place, and second, it has very tasty, authentic Mexican food. We are now in Black Panther and unfortunately Python Snake territory. The Panthers are good, but the Pythons are bad. If y'all are not aware, the pythons are an invasive species that are really hurting the local small animal population here in South Florida. Our neighbor at camp is hunting the pythons tonight and I told him to wake us up if he gets one. Unfortunately, our neighbor did not see any pythons last night, but it's a beautiful misty morning in the Big Cypress with lots of birds and active fish in this small pond. Get ready for the alligators along this section as we enter the Everglades. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
there is a pretty long section riding along US 41. Luckily though, there is a levee to ride on starting at the memorial for the Value Jet airline crash. Up in the distance is our destination for tonight, the Mikasuki Casino and Resort. Oh, I missed it. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. We are back along the edge of the Everglades and riding with a bunch of black vultures who do not seem to understand the direction we are moving and just keep flying ahead just to land and then repeat the process over and over. It's pretty entertaining. I know I keep saying this, but the wind is not in our favor again, and now that we are riding all of this open area, it's making this shorter mileage day feel much longer. The one silver lining to all this wind is it's keeping the temps down. So the urban jungle of the Florida Keys begin. It's now pretty much only one road to follow all the way to the end of this adventure. If you all are not interested in riding the Florida Keys section, there is an alternative ending in Flamingo which will give you a more peaceful and desolate ending instead of the crazy touristy ending at Key West. From here on out, we are hoteling it and got a nice hotel right on the water to enjoy a typical Florida sunset.
This has never happened to us before, but I got food poisoning from dinner last night and not feeling 100%. We had the option to ride all the way to Key West today, but that is not happening now. And we'll just take our time and enjoy the sight. Our first stop is Laura Quinn Wild Bird Sanctuary. Our second stop is Windley Key Fossil Reef Geological State Park, which was previously a quarry. The fossil laden stone here is beautiful, along with the banana spiders. Most of the stone taken from Windley is on structures throughout the area like this one, the Key Memorial. Still feeling the effects of the bad food, but are so close now to the end point, nothing is going to stop us. We don't have any good things to say about the Seven Mile Bridge. Fred the Tree is interesting though. We keep moving along in the urban jungle of bridges with cars and bridges with people fishing. It's a choose your own adventure game of which area is less annoying. This is all you need to see in here to figure out where we are now. Yes, we have made it to Key West, and what a zoo it is. It's actually fun though, as we skirt around the west side of town making our way to the southernmost point. We decided to check out the historic Fort Zachary Taylor and get one last section of dirt before calling this bicycle adventure complete. Key West is slammed with people, and of course when we ride by the southernmost point marker, there is a long line. We have ridden 1,100 miles to get here, but still no way we are waiting in line like we are at Disney World to get our picture and decide to come back tomorrow when it's less crowded. We spend the evening playing tourist and for me trying to drink some beer that Michelle had to finish for me.
Our plan to come back in the morning worked perfect. Then we spend the rest of the day exploring the city before heading to the Key West Express Ferry for our evening boat ride to Fort Myers Beach. This is a pretty ideal way to exit the city as they just roll your bike right onto the boat, then we relax and enjoy our four hour journey in style. Once we are in Fort Myers Beach, we will ride to a hotel for the night, then rent a U-Haul to get us the rest of the way home. And that's it. It was one heck of an epic adventure. and hope you all enjoyed getting a glimpse of what bikepacking in Florida is like. There is definitely way more to Florida than just busy paved roads, beaches, and theme parks. Florida has done an amazing job at maintaining a wildlife corridor that stretches across the entire state, which makes the Florida hiking trail and this bikepacking route possible. Bikepacking gave this route a difficult rating of 6, and that feels pretty accurate to us. This route is also up there on our list of most enjoyable adventures. Thank you again for watching and subscribing to our channel. It means a lot to us. Until next time, happy trails. Do it. <laughs>